You guys know me. I'm Erica Webb, a.k.a. Grace Girl. I'm always going to make space for Grace in the Place. I am here. Y'all used to seeing me with my crew, Sticks and Stones. We're doing something a little different. We are going to be talking about and highlighting the Power Conference that's coming up very soon. And we really, really um, want you guys to get over there and register. But as a bit of an incentive, we are going to be wetting your appetite all this week. And today, I have the distinct and fantastic fantastic pleasure of speaking with a woman of God that I just have been, oh my goodness, looking up to and honoring for so long. Uh, our, our dear pastor, Krista Tyson, is here this morning to speak with us. And just like I said, whet your appetite just a little bit for what's coming. We're not going to give it all away because we want you to go and register and come and get what God has for you. But good morning, Pastor Tyson. Thank good you so morning. much for joining us. It is my pleasure, my extreme pleasure. Uh, will you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh my goodness, I am um, I am a PK, and I am a PK, um, a pastor's kid. My mother is a pastor, and my mother started uh, several churches, and each church that she moved on to to start another. Um, was left in the hands of a male pastor. And some of those churches are still moving forward. My mother was my greatest inspiration, my greatest inspiration. I saw how she um, dealt with the challenges of that time. And it encouraged and it strengthened me in the challenge in ministry. And, and we're gonna deal with that. But mm -hmm. dealt with the challenges in ministry, especially females, in leadership and um i am now um assisting my husband and my son and in the church in youngstown ohio mount calvary pentecostal church and also in indianapolis christ church apostolic so those are my hearts and it's a 24 7 job <laughs> and so they have you talking about women working in ministry i would love to just hear your thoughts about some of the um, how you have experienced being in the ministry as a woman, if you don't mind me asking. I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with that. We want to talk about um, not without a struggle. Wow. Understanding, especially women that are in ecclesiastical leadership. And when I talk about ecclesiastical leadership, it's not just being a preacher or a teacher, but it, it's being a, an administrator too. And that is sort of supervising the day-to-day -day operations of the church. That is even involved in the sacraments, the communion, the matrimony, all, all of that, everything that a, um, a female woman has to do or a female woman does. Under Understanding that our challenges, our challenges are still today as they were on years past. And I'll say this, and that is that my mother experienced quite a bit in trying to um, pastor churches, trying to found churches or start churches. Um, she was, my mother at that time, many um, preachers did not, or pastors did not believe in women starting churches and women pastoring and, and none of that. So my mother was, um, my mother was told that if she started the church, that she was not um, welcome to fellowship. She was not welcome to fellowship with the church. And, and I had an older sister and um, they tried to disconnect her from my mother because of my mother going into the ministry. But my mother spoke and she said that um, what the Lord has called her to do, that she was going to do. And we're going to get into a little bit of that. Um, but it is first a leadership, uh, a female in leadership first to have, um, has to first uh, do some self-discovery, knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. Who are you, who has God called you to be? And whoever God has called you to be, you have to know, first of all, that it was the voice of God and not allow yourself to be stopped. Now, I'm not saying be disobedient. Come on. And, and sometimes I think we as uh, women can also make the mistake of, of um, being disobedient in our trying to lead. Mm -hmm. 
yes. uh, and, and I won't go into all of that, but I want to talk about empowering yes. empowering us the right way. Understanding that you don't have to act outside of yourself and you know, lead that was what God called you to do. So I, I am so... Your mom's story and your story, it, it intrigues me so deeply. <laughs> I just... Oh my goodness. I, because this idea, I mean, of someone saying, listen, if you do this, there are going to be consequences. We won't allow you to fellowship. Most people interpret that to be, this must not be the will of God. This must not be God's will, you know? And that is a tough space to be in. I'd love for you to speak very, very briefly. I know we're gonna get into it. I don't want people to get too much. Okay. But briefly, would you speak on maybe just two ways that someone can explore um, the difference between when opposition means it's not God and when opposition means you know, I mean, still means move forward. Um, that distinction of like, yeah, just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not God, but just, but there are times it's hard because there God is redirecting. Um, what are some ways to, to garner uh, clarity from the Holy Spirit about those things? I, I can say this, and that is that, uh, first of all, let me say this, and that is when, especially women, are moving into roles that for years have been predominantly um, male roles, then you are seen as challenging the paradigm. And when you challenge the paradigm, um, not by force, but by call, when you, as you said, you must first understand the foundation, um, which is what God has called you to do. When you have a definite understanding of the call that God has placed you into, then watch this. Sometimes we think that there's only one way of fulfilling this call. Come on. But we have learned in the pandemic that God has opened up our minds to understand that the call that we have on our lives can be fulfilled in several ways and not just standing in the pulpit. Hear me? My God. Because our first thought is, in order for me to lead, I've got to stand in the pulpit. Come on. Understand this, leadership is not designated to just stand in the pulpit, but watch this say, leadership is the ability to take what is given to you and move it forward. If you cannot take what is given to you and move it forward, then you need to think about whether you are a leader or you are a follower. Now, I need to say this, everybody, everybody has a call upon their life. Everybody is a leader in their own area of functioning. Yes. But you must understand what is your area of functioning. Now, with that being said, let me address just briefly your question. And that is, sometimes we make the mistake of believing that um, um, just because there are challenges that that means for me to stop. No, no, no. Understand this. Jesus had challenges. Come on. Uh, now, Jesus, um, for lack of a better word, his own group of people challenged him. And when his own group of people challenged him, he stood, he still understood the expected end. While he, are, while he was being fought, he understood, I'm doing this for their better end. Yes. I can't focus on what they're doing right now, but I must understand that I have, there is an expected end for them to be greater than what they are even now. When we experience challenges, it does not mean um, that we are to stop, but maybe it means for one, to back up and take a look at how you're doing it. Right. 
because one thing that the Lord does not do, and that is he does not cause you to stir up a whole bunch of confusion uh, underneath in your call. What has your leadership said to you? Are they backing you? Are they saying, yes, you're supposed to do this. Yes, we're pushing you forward. You must have a leader even being a leader. Yes, ma'am. You don't have anybody overseeing you you, you, you're out of order. I'm just going to say it like that. You're out of order. You see it faster. Mm-hmm. You need it. So, so then, so then um, even, uh, uh, I guess the, the, the answer to the whole question is, step back and check what God has called you to do. And check how you are doing it. Because as women, it does not mean that you step out of order. It does not mean that you step out of character Man. in order to do what God has called you to do. Be careful, because when you step out of character, when you become uh, uh, um, when you become the uh, the aggressor, Man. God has called you as the woman that you are. Allow your anointing to open a door for you. Listen, let me, let, me, let me say this. If you're feeling, if you're feeling the presence of God like I am and you're a woman and you know God is calling you to this seminar, you're free to go to powerconf.com, P-O-W-E-R-C-O-N-F.com and get registered right now. Do that right now. Come back and get the rest of these jewels that they will be ready for you when you come back. You can pick it up while it's hot still. But I didn't know I was going to get ministered to like this this morning. I I love that she said when you're going in an area be certain you're not going with force but with with a calling when god calls you into an area you are not breaking down the door hallelujah god is blessing the door to be open and the way to be prepared for you and if that's not happening step back for a minute and say god how do i go about getting to the area you call listen y'all need to be in this track i 